One power, indescribable, and you speak of it with every word you say. Mysterious until you know the truth. As simple as the love inside of you. Call it spirit, call it Jesus, call it Lord, call it Buddha, Baha'u'llah, angels' wings or heaven's door, but whatever name you give it, it's all one power, can't you see? It's the power of the love in you and me. One power, one power, one power, one power, one power. We speak so many languages, different clothing, different colors, different names. But different is only dangerous when we forget that in our heart we're all the same. We'll remember when we close our eyes and see such distances were never meant to be. God, call it spirit, call it Jesus, call it Lord, call it Buddha, Baha'u'llah, Hashem, or heaven's door. It's Muhammad, it's your mind, it's your soul, or it's your sign. It's the universe, it's music, Mother Earth, or Father Time, but whatever a name you give it it's all one power can't you see whatever name you give it it's a very air we breathe it's the power of the love in you and me one power 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 it's a moment of creation it's an everlasting peace it's a freedom of forgiveness it's the sweetness of release. It's the joy of inspiration. It's the sunshine on your face. It's the birthright of all nations. It's the boundlessness of space. It's the beauty of a baby, the serenity of sleep. It's the anger we abandon. For it's love that's most deep, it's one power, one power, one power. It's one power, one power, one power. It's the power 
Mother, Father, God, we thank you for the love in this room, for the love that comes from everyone connected to this community. We see each and every one of them being raised to their highest consciousness. We see all of us doing God's good work today. We are blessed and prosperous. We know that there's only one power in the universe and in our lives, and that's God the good, omnipotent, everywhere present, all-knowing. We give thanks for this in and after the nature of Jesus the Christ, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good Yay. Morning. Happy Yay. Sunday. Wee, 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 wee. Uh, I'm Reverend Roxanne. I am the senior minister here at Unity on the Space Coast. And we got it going on today, I have to tell you. We have as our special guest today, Miss Kim Ballou. Wee, 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 wee. Yay. Yay. We are blessed. And, of course, we have... Um, our sound guys <laughs> working really, really hard. Um, John and Alex and Debbie all working sound and technology, and they're like little magicians. We give them big thanks. <laughs> Barbara McGillicuddy always doing a wonderful job supporting us with her music talent, all under the direction of our wonderful music <laughs> director, Eric Brook. <laughs> 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 You know, abundantly prospered and divinely blessed. That's us. And I've heard a little bit about some grieving happening. And I would expect some grieving to go on when we're not all able to come here on Sundays and be together. I, I would expect that. And, you know, we need to make space for that and allow that to happen. But what I want to tell you is that we have not stopped growing just because we're not here yet we will be here and when we come here we are gonna be ready for you I have to tell you that um, well the technology folks oh my goodness the hours that have gone into learning all of this new software and all of this new technology I bet if you're online today you know that you'll see something very different right you get to see us and it looks like we have a brand new screen how about that we every week they uh, get more and more and more this this what what we were gifted with will bring us wonderful online presence so they're working really really hard at that and then in the meantime we also have um, Michael Claperich and Michael Triandafeld and Richard Hines are here working on garden, working on getting things ready. They're, they're patching and painting and putting up paper towel dispensers and doing things. We are so getting ready and we are growing. We now have people watching online that had never come to the church and had never watched on Facebook Live before. And now they're tuning in every week. And so we're still growing. So allow space for that, that grief. But don't think for a second that when you get back here, we won't work you to death, because we will. <laughs> Absolutely not a problem. We've got lots and lots of things and all of the projects and plans that you all had, we still have them. They might look a little different, but we have what we need to do it. And we welcome it and so bless the growth that we are having. And I promise you, the only thing that might make being here with you right now a little bit better is if you are actually in the room. But I see that happening. So, mwah. What do we do now? Oh, <laughs> oh it's me, it's yeah. me. Okay, yeah. We should have known it was me, yeah. Okay, so here at this church, we have a big, big uh, statement of being. 
your board came together, the church leaders came together and took all of the work that you did in the visioning process and came up with this statement of being. So let's all say it together. We, we are, are the, the creative, creative I am, am dedicating, dedicating our lives to its full realization through compassion, compassion inclusiveness, and joyous service. service. Amen. Our affirmation for today is, I am divinely guided. Let's say that together. I, I am, am divinely, divinely guided. guided. Amen. And together, we're all going to say the prayer for protection. This is the truth that we know. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Yay, God. Yay. Oh, boy. All right, now this is our July anchor. You know it. have as much fun doing that as we have. I can see uh, like Jeannie Hamilton at home dancing and singing, oh, can't yes. you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, too fun. So this is Sunday, July 12, 2020. 
Our word for the day is guidance. I am divinely guided. Guidance can be easy to find in the outer world. Maps and GPS technology can help me navigate my way just about anywhere. Everywhere I go, there are signs marking streets, adorning storefronts, and providing just about every kind of information and opinion imaginable. Spiritual guidance often is not as evident, but it is much more valuable. This guidance can come to me as a persistent tug on my attention, as a gut feeling or intuition, or even in a dream as I sleep. I pay attention to the guidance I receive and step out in faith to move my steps in its direction. I know that spirit of wisdom and love within me are always guiding me to blessings of greater peace, love, and prosperity. Our scripture today is from Psalm 25, 4. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. And so it is. Amen. And now we're going to move into a time of meditation. this time, close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so, and get in a comfortable position, and breathe deeply, and exhale long. Feel the love of God saturating every part of your body. Feel it as it comes in through the top of your head, down your neck, your shoulders, all the way to the tips of your fingers. It moves through your torso, down your legs, and to your tiniest toe. Feel that love. And that love is not bound by this body. See that love going endlessly beyond you. Touching your neighbors, your city. See it moving across Florida and now across our whole nation, and finally see our entire world covered with God's love seeping into every nook and cranny, every mind, every soul is connected together through God. everywhere present. Now come back in to the God in you and breathe.
connect with God. Let God show you your next right step. God will guide you through your life like floating on a lazy river. Close your eyes, take a breath, and go deeply within and allow it to happen. Any questions you have, any concern, any discomfort or dis-ease, let God bring you comfort let God be your guiding light. Float in the flow of God. And let's take that into the silence. As we bring our minds back together, we already know that our souls are one. So we bring our minds back to this place and this time, knowing that any time we have the slightest bit of discomfort or dis-ease, we have everything within us to know exactly the right and perfect action to take. Take the time to be quiet with God. And so it is. Amen. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart you are a part of me you are the face of God you are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are my family. You are the face of God. Amen. heard a powerful story about a man who stood in his truth. Such conviction in who he was, he would not be moved. Someone stepped out of the crowd and said, are you Martin Luther King? He said, yes, I am. And the well-dressed man spit on him. Then King took out his handkerchief and wiped the hate from his suit. He gave it back to the man and said, I 
so good to be here. Uh, my name is Kim Ballou, and um, funny thing, I came down to uh, Florida to get a little getaway and uh, got a message last night from Eric saying, hey, would you want to give a message of music at Space Coast tomorrow morning? Woo! And of course, I said yes. Yeah. And I'm so grateful. And thank you, Roxanne, for opening the invitation and Eric. And for everyone, just at the last minute, we're just throwing it together, and we're standing before you, um, I'm standing before you with grace, and that's really all I can say about, you know, there's just so much grace. Mm -hmm. This is a talk that I gave um, just two weeks ago at Unity in Cincinnati, where I'm from, and uh, it's just a modified version of it, because when I'm asked to give a talk at the last minute, I'm just going <laughs> to bring one that I've done recently, and, and uh, so thank you so much for being with us and with me. And so the talk title is, You Are the Face of God, No Exceptions. No Exceptions. No Exceptions. I just want you to breathe that in for a minute. You are the face of God, no exceptions. Every single person that you see on the street, on the news, every person is the face of God. 
sometimes that's hard for me to breathe in and to believe and to see because I know for myself, I shrouded the face of God within me with a whole lot of other things for so long that people couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes other people do that as well, and it's hard for me to see, and I forget, and I see them as my enemy. I don't see God in there. And so I just want to speak from that place, because with everything that's going on in the world right now, it is easy to forget that everyone is the face of God. Mm -hmm. The dividing lines, there's so many of them, so many, and there are more and more. And so if you could pull up that first slide, I just want to show most people know what this is, right? Rainbows. It's, uh, it's rainbows, but this is the flag that stands for pride, LGBTQ pride. That's the flag. And so we just came out of June, which is Pride Month 50 years ago. Last month was the first Pride March. And uh, so, you know, the face of God. How many years have people in the LGBTQ community not been seen as the face of God? Mm -hmm. And there are still many who are not seen that way. So that's the first thing. Can I see the next one? Who knows what this is that hasn't, that didn't <laughs> learn right before the service? Who knows what this is? This flag? Anybody know? No? This is for trans people. This is the flag for trans. And so a lot of people don't know what that is. Trans is a foreign thing to a lot of people. Well, all right. Thank you, Eric. He's on it. Yeah. So trans is seen as something separate, and a lot of people don't see trans as the face of God. And so my invitation is that if you want to get to know what this is about, sit down with someone and have a conversation with them. If you want to get to know what that pride flag is about, sit down with someone and have a conversation. If you want to know more about Native American lives, sit down with someone and have a conversation. You want to know more about a police officer, sit down with them and have a conversation because what the media shows us is not that person. And the way that we break down or that I break down those barriers and those dividing lines is I sit down with someone that I don't know anything about and I ask them. And so, you know, we have the whole movement. And I've sat down with a lot of my black friends and asked them about their pain. That's where I begin. Tell me about your pain. I can tell you that I don't feel like I'm racist or biased, and yet I don't know your pain, and I never will, but you can tell me, and I can be your ally. You can tell me as a gay person what your pain is so I can be a better ally. Does that make sense? And so I speak from my perspective. That's all I have is my own personal life experiences. So some of the things that I'm hearing all the time, I've heard since I came out, I've heard over the years um, are, well, it didn't happen to me, so it's not important. But to me, humanity is important. These are all issues of humanity. In that statement, it said inclusive. Where is, where is someone left out of that? Is there someone left out of we are inclusive? If you come in here and you say I'm trans, are you left out? No. Yeah. How can I be more inclusive when I leave this room where it feels safe and comfortable? How can I see the face of God when I'm not here? And so one of the things is there's a, some unity principles, you might know them. And so if you could put that slide up. So the second unity principle says, oh, there it is, hey. Humans have a spark of divinity within them. The Christ spirit within, their very essence is of God and therefore they are inherently good. That's the second unity principle. 
It doesn't leave anyone out. I don't see where it says, except if you're this, then you don't fit in that, right? Can I see the next one? Unity principle number five. Knowing and understanding the laws of life is not enough. A person must also live the truth that they know. That is putting feet on everything that I say and walking out this door and trying to live it. Can we have the next one? Living these truths means we show up in all activities of our lives with a consciousness that what we do and the way we behave matters. Living these truths means we show up in all activities of our lives with a consciousness that what we do and the way we behave matters. It means how I live outside of here is what's important. How I interact with that person in traffic. That person that upsets me. How I behave matters. It's a hard one. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be on a forever journey of learning how to see everyone as the face of God. I'm going to tell you that. But I want to put feet on it, and I want to learn more. And so I'm willing to sit down and have conversations with the people that might bug me the most so that I can figure out how I can connect and see the face of God in them. That's how I heal the divide. And so I'm just going to share with you some of my own personal experiences because I have nothing else to share but that. And so some of the things that happened to me along my journey, that questions that were posed to me, things that were said to me, some may know this. If you're my Facebook friend, you know a lot about me <laughs> because I share very openly on there. But maybe you don't. And, and so one of the things about my journey is I was sex trafficked as a child. And here's the thing. I don't ever want anyone else to ever be sex trafficked to be my ally. All I want you to do is sit down and have a conversation with me and learn about the pain and learn how you can be a better ally to me. Do you get that? And so every single person, they just want to be understood. They want an ally. And you can't be an ally to someone that you know nothing about their life unless you sit down and have a conversation with them. Connect with them. That's what I'm aiming to do. Some of the things that people said to me were, but Kim, it happened so long ago. Why do we have to talk about it now? As long as there's still pain, we need to talk about it. As long as there's still healing that needs to be done, the conversations need to happen. As long as there are places where you can't go as a gay person and feel safe to hold your partner's hand, we need to talk about it. As long as I had a slideshow that I played of home that we, you know, in 24 hours, it's hard to get it to work. But it had pictures of, you know, people of all different backgrounds. You know, Eric tried, so I'm going to say thank you, Eric, for trying so hard. But the slideshow had Matthew Shepard. Who knows who Matthew Shepard is? And it had Trayvon Martin. You know who Trayvon Martin is? Yeah. These people were all killed just because of who they are. How do we heal that? That when I walk out the door or someone else walks out their door, they feel like they're okay, whoever they are, wherever they go. And the only thing I know how to do is speak from my own place of healing and what I need and what I know other people need. And that is remembering that we're all the face of God. No exceptions. No exceptions. Say it with me. You are the face of God. No exceptions. None. A guy that cut me off in traffic, still the face of God. <laughs> yep. Still the face of God. I just might have to work harder to see it. I'm the one that's blocked in that situation. And so these are my areas. When I sing, thank you for the part you played in my journey, can say to my stepfather, who was my offender, thank you. Because if it weren't for every step of that journey, I wouldn't be right here right now. And if I'm okay with where I am right now, 
I have to thank you for the part you played in getting me here. I'm just going to breathe on that for a minute. Maybe I can think about more recent relationships where, you know, there's a lot of grief and there's a lot of pain and it's still kind of fresh and I can still say, thank you because I'm grateful for standing right here, right now and who I am. How often do any of you look in the mirror and you can't even see the face of God in your own reflection? And so my invitation would be, because I, I struggle with that, years into my own recovery and my own healing, I have those moments when I wake up and I'm like, oh, God, really? <laughs> you know? And I tear myself down and I compare to other people and I think someone else is so much more spiritual because they don't ever share about the pain that they're feeling. And so obviously they must have something figured out that I don't. And I look at myself and I'm like, you are not the face of God. And so the reminder is to first look at ourselves and really feel the face of God within so that we can put feet on it, so that I can. Because in these rooms is where most of us come together and we have that like-mindedness and we're all seeking the same thing. This is where it's easy. Where it's hard is when we're at home with our people, with our families, when we're in traffic, at the grocery store, watching the news, getting all caught up in fear, and then the face of God disappears somewhere, right? Just, yeah, <laughs> just a little bit, yeah. And so that's where I want to put everything into action because without that action, it means nothing. If it weren't for a couple of really kind, amazing people who sat with me over the years of my healing and really listened to me and held my hand, I wouldn't be standing here today. Everyone else was afraid of me because I was kind of scary. I really was kind of scary. You know, I, I looked a whole, I wish I had pictures of myself I could show you what I looked like. And I mean, I literally put off an energy. You ever see that, you know, you, you encounter that person that the energy just says, don't come near me. I had that energy. I had people that would come up to me years into my own recovery and say, I used to be afraid to just approach you. You put off such an energy of anger. And so how can I walk out these doors and change that energy and be the person that sees that hurt person over there that's putting that vibe off and still walk up and say, hey, I would love to sit down and have coffee with you or tell me something about yourself because there was a handful of people that did that for me. And so all the things that look like they're so different from us, so separate, that's not my issue. I've got enough going on in my own life. But this is humanity. If one of us, if one group of us feels oppressed, all of us are oppressed. And so the only way to heal that oppression is for us to sit down with that person that scares us and say, tell me something. Give me five minutes. I would like to know more about you. Email. You know, you can't sit down with them face to face right now. Email. It's great. Let's Zoom together. Yeah. I've gotten to know quite a few people um, over this last, I don't know, 12, 14 weeks because I've been doing Zoom book studies, leading Zoom book studies. And people have joined in from all over the country. And I'm getting to know people on a deeper level. And so it's the wonderful gift that's come out of of this, you know, is that my life slowed down enough for me to say, oh, I can do two book studies a week on Zoom and join the board at my church, which, you know, I might have lost my mind a little bit, you know. <laughs> 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 but there I, there I am. I'm on it. I said it. They're probably listening and they, they know. So <laughs> it's fine. They know. They know. It's, you know, you got you to gotta lose your mind a little bit to join a church board. So, you know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Lose your mind a little bit, you know, and find something new in the, in, the lo in the loss. But, you know, one of the things, you know, for me is just being able to reimagine how I live from here forward. There's no new normal. It's just new. It's just new. 
And um, my new wants to be putting feet on you are the face of God, no exceptions, because there's so much space for so much fear and so much anger and so much hurt and so much more divisiveness right now. And I, I don't want to live in that. I'm ready to put feet on it. And I'm asking you to join me in that. One conversation at a time with one person that you don't know something about. And so I'm, I'm going to play a song for you that many of you have heard me play many times, and I've told a different story behind it. But today, I'm not telling that story. Today, I'm just going to play it and invite you to imagine this world with me, to imagine. Oh, hello. This is. This must be the good microphone. <laughs> All right. This is the singing microphone. And so I'm going to go to the piano, and I'm going I'm to play. And uh, Eric and, and uh, Barbara are going to join me. And we're going to imagine together that this is the world. I mean, this song was written in 1980. This is the world that we're going to live in together. We're going to see the face of God. So I ask you to imagine it with us. Just take a nice deep breath. <laughs> I changed? Oh. <laughs> All right, here we go. Nothing to kill or die And no religion to Imagine all the only one. I 
hope someday you will join us and the world So that's it. That's, you know, what I've got is imagine that with us and please join us in imagining a new world. Come on up. Come on up. You don't have to, you don't have to wait. Just come on up. That's it. Thank you so much for, yeah, hugs. She wants to hug so much. Uh, and I know. I yeah. do. I so do. Thank you. I saw somebody for the first time last night um, in months, right? And it was all I could do not to just sneak in a little hug. Well, it's just a little hug, but we didn't. We behaved. So this is the time in our service where we celebrate our prosperity with our gifts, our tithes, and our love offerings. Hmm. We know that through God we have everything we could ever possibly need. That this is an abundant world with no lack. There's enough God for everyone. So let's take our tithe and hold it or bless it and say the blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, for the joy of giving and receiving. And so it is. Amen. All right, and so this is a song written about gay rights, but it's about rights for everybody, really, is how I'm gonna see it today. Yeah, that's right. When I was in the third grade, I thought that I was gay, because I could draw. My uncle was, and I kept my room straight to my mom, tears rushing down my face. She's like, Kim, you've loved girls since before pre-K. Tripping. Yeah, I guess she had a point, didn't she? Bunch of stereotypes all in my head. I remember doing the math, like, yeah, I'm good at Little League. A preconceived idea of what it all meant for those that like the same sex, have the characteristics. The right-wing conservatives think it's a decision, and you could be cured with some treatment and religion. Man may rewiring of a predisposition, playing God. <laughs> Oh no, here we go. America the brave still feels that we don't know. And God loves all his children, but some are forgotten. But we paraphrase a book written 3,500 years ago. I don't know. Even if I tried, even if I wanted to, and I can't change, even if I tried, even if I wanted to, my love, my love, my love, she keeps me warm. She keeps me warm. She keeps me warm. She keeps me warm. If I was gay, I would think hip hop hates me. Have you read the YouTube comments lately? Man, that's gay gets dropped on a daily. We become so numb to what we're saying. A culture founded from oppression. You, we don't have acceptance for them. Call each other faggots behind the keys of a message board. A world rooted in hate, yet a genre still ignores it. Gay is synonymous with the lesser. It's the same hate that's caused wars from religion, gender, skin, color, the complexion of your pigment. The same fight that led people to walkouts and sit It's human rights for everybody. There is no difference. Live on and be yourself. When I was in church, they taught me something else. If you preach hate at the service, there's words on anointed, and the holy water that you soak in is in poison when everybody else is more comfortable remaining voiceless rather than fighting for humans that have had their rights stolen. I might be the same, but that's not important. No freedom till we're equal. Darn right I support it. Yeah. That's 
right. It's time that we support all humans, rights for everybody, no one oppressed. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't change, even if I try, even if I wanted to. My love, my love, my love, she keeps me warm. She keeps me warm. She keeps me warm. She keeps me warm. Press play. Don't press pause. Progress march on. With the veil of our eyes, we turn our back on the calls until the day that my uncles can be not by long. Yeah. The kids are walking around the hallway, plagued by so much pain in the heart. Some would rather die than to be who they are. A certificate on paper isn't going to solve it all. It's a darn good place to start. No law is going to change us. We have to change us. Whatever God you believe in, we came from the same one. Strip away the fear. Underneath it's all the same love. About time that we raised up. Yeah, who's ready? Yeah. It's time. That's right. Ha. Yeah. And I can't change even if I try, even if I wanted to. My love, my love, my love, she keeps me warm. Keep it going. She keeps me warm. She keeps me warm, she keeps me warm. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is patient, love is kind. Not crying on Sunday, not crying on Sunday, not crying on Sunday, not crying on, not crying on. shirt but it says kindness looks amazing on you how wonderful is that we should all like put on our kindness today and walk around and see how fabulous we look <laughs> be great all right let's put a final blessing on our offering mother father god we know that this offering is the very substance of your being and that it was created before we were even born we know and acknowledge that according to your perfect law, it returns to each giver, heaped up, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For an increased understanding of this perfect law, we do give thanks, and so it is. Amen. Yay. All right. We have prayer chaplains that would love to pray with you one-on-one -on -one or just pray for you all week. They, um, yeah. On our website, you can click on the prayer request and tell us what your prayer needs are, and we're happy to take those. If you'd like a prayer chaplain to call you, just write that in there and give your phone number, and one will call you as quickly as possible. You can also uh, call, uh, you could call a church. I'll probably answer the phone, and I'd be happy to pray with you one-on-one, -on -one, okay? So we take all those prayers, and we pray for a week, and then we send them off to Unity Village in Missouri, and they pray on them seven days a week, 24 hours a day for a whole month. So really, really, really strong prayer work goes into those requests. We do not take them lightly. We uh, are all about prayer here at Unity. I'd also like to welcome newcomers and uh, Anyone who's watching us for the first time, we love you, love you, love you, and we'd love to send you a gift. We'd love to talk to you or send you information about our ministry. So if you'll, again, click on our website and say, contact us and give us your information, or out on Facebook, you can do it there as well. Someone will get back to you and be happy to tell you all about Unity and all about our church. Hmm. You could also email me at Roxanne at unityonthespacecoast.org. I have a few announcements. First announcement. 
is if anyone needs, feels a need to be connected to the church and you want to come here, we desperately need weed pullers in the garden. Now, I can't say let's, all, let's have a garden party like we've done many, many times because we can't really come together, right? But we can each go to the garden and pull our share of weeds and, and meditate and be here on the grounds in our beautiful garden, making it even more beautiful. So feel free to do that. Then today after service we will be on zoom for a few minutes just to say hello to everybody and um the zoom number is on our website or our facebook page um there it is there it is get together on zoom after church service say hello get caught up zoom number 565-327-497 join us just for a few minutes to say Hello, and to see everybody. Then we have morning meditation with Mike. Seven days, oh, excuse me. I'm going to get a drink of water, and then I'll quit thinking about the fact that my lips are sticking to my teeth. <laughs> and I can actually pay attention to what's going on. All right, very good. Whew, huh, so much better. Every weekday morning at 7 a.m., Michael Trey Andefels uh, leads a meditation. Quiet, beautiful meditation. 7 a.m. every weekday morning. Same Zoom number, join them there. Then we have healing hour on, two, on Monday at 11 o'clock with Barbara McGillicuddy. I've been joining that, I've been enjoying it a lot. Um, you can also do that on Facebook Live on her Facebook page as well. But join us on, Tuesday, uh, on Mondays at 11. I'm stuck on Tuesdays. Tuesdays, we have a 12.30 Daily Word meditation and check-in. And it is exactly that. We read the Daily Word, we do a meditation, and then we check in. So it's another great time to commune with people in this uh, community. Then on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 o'clock, we have metaphysical book study led by D. Constant and Dixie Reedy. And we've been having a lot of good times with that too, actually getting really deep. Right now we're doing the fifth agreement, which is pretty awesome. Uh, what is the fifth agreement? Uh, skeptical. It, be skeptical and listen. It's a great statement. Be skeptical and listen. So join us for that. Then on Wednesdays, we are having our prosperity class, and we are definitely going deep on that class. But feel free to join us, 6.30 to 8, Wednesday night, same Zoom number, same bat channel. We'll love to have you. And then SEE is coming up. SEE is coming up really quickly. It starts Monday the 20th. SEE, Spiritual Enrichment and Education. It's where we teach unity principles. It's where we teach how to metaphysically interpret things. It's how we, we teach you about uh, unity prayer. We teach you, a, you know, all of the unity basics are taught during this week. There's another course of uh, self-awareness, which is a great course. So lots and lots of fabulous courses, wonderful teachers, and they're all gonna be held on Zoom. So if you have any interest in doing that, classes start at 8 in the morning, they end at 5 at night, and you could do anything in the middle. So contact me by calling the church or emailing me, and we will get you set up in classes. And don't let um, a lack or a sense of lack of finance uh, keep you from doing it because you're prosperous, and we'll just let you do it. Just tell me what class it is that you want, and we will let you come and join us. And, and give your heart and your love and all your good nature to the class. Because each and every single person that is in the class makes a huge difference. So please, it's a great thing to do while you're uh, at home. Anything else? Oh, yes. Speaking about having the hard conversations, we are going to start a con uh, Courageous Conversations meeting Monday nights 
6.30 to 8, starting July 27th. You know, Kim was talking about ask the hard questions. Ask the questions that make you uncomfortable. That's actually what Courageous Conversations is all about. And they, can, they have a wide variety of uncomfortable questions, right? Um, it's not all about one topic. So come and see us Monday night starting uh, July 27th. We're pretty excited about that. I think that's it. Let's sing our peace song together. Sunday. Love you.